Hey everybody, how are we doing today? Um, Y'all stay tuned, don't turn around yet. Because everybody flips, like two seconds, they watch it and they're gone, and I'm like, really? So, we're doing the elbow today. Three views of the elbow. There are a lot more views, obviously, like we talked about. We talked about the coil method for traumas. Um, there is both a medial and lateral oblique, depending on what the doctor wants, or depending on what we're looking at, or depending on what the protocol of the facility is. Always follow the protocol. If the doctor requests, hey, I need to see the, the coronoid more than the radial head, then you might do the other oblique. It just depends on where you're working and what the routine is. So always follow whatever the, the practice has. So we're gonna do left elbow today. This, sorry. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and extend the arm much like we did with the forearm. Same things that we did with the forearm we need to do with the elbow. We need to have everything on the same plane. Um, which we're pretty good there. I'm gonna lean, lean you forward just a little. Now, obviously, since we're doing the elbow, the patient can only lean so far forward be, before their body's up against that and it's a little uncomfortable. So the other way to do it would be, again, like I said the other day, to raise the image receptor, put sponges or something under it, raise the table if it raises, something like that. Obviously, like I said, the sponges we have would work because they're all angled. So, and you would need one big enough to set it securely on so it couldn't flop over either because that would cause problems. So, try to get everything on that same plane. Our SID is 40. Tabletop still. Yeah. So, we're going to collimate to where we have about two inches of the humerus, two inches of the radius and ulna, and the entire elbow joint. We want the epicondyles in what relation to the IR? Parallel. parallel, exactly. If the epicondyles are parallel, the arm is on the same plane, then we know we are in a true AP position. Patient holds still, and that's our first exposure. Pretty simple, just like the forearm, except for centered a little bit higher up the arm mid elbow right at the, the crease of the elbow that's it questions okay um so the obliques so the one we're going to compound is the lateral oblique the medial is literally rolling the hand over i don't know if y'all remember that image in mod one where it's like identify the position it's just a dude sitting like this that's what it was. It's because you can see now that these epicondyles are rotated about how much? 45 degrees. So this is an easy one to do. The lateral oblique is a little harder because if you stick your arm out, does it go that way naturally? No. no. Even my good shoulder that I haven't torn up doesn't really go out. So how do we do that? How do I get her arm 45 degrees that way? Just crank it until it moves? No, that would be rude. The way I do it is I lean the patient. I lean the entire patient. So I'm going to move your arm over just a little bit, and then we're going to lean. So see, now we're at 45 degrees almost. And I didn't really, so this way just a little bit, straighten it out. That's as close to 45 degrees we're gonna get. So this is gonna show which joint space open better. A proximal radio ulna. Killing me, Smalls. <laughs> we're just gonna show the proximal radio ulna joint open. You're gonna be able to see, what was it, Caleb, did you say? What on the radius? The tuberosity. Tuberosity, very good. What else are we gonna see? Not scratching my head for no reason. We're gonna see yeah. the head of the radius too. And the neck. So we're gonna see the head of the radius and that neck free of that imposition that we had on the straight AP. Okay? So go ahead and straighten your arm back out. So that's your AP, medial or lateral oblique. We're gonna comp on the lateral. Again, some patients can bend it out, but for me it's easiest just to lean them. If you have an 80 year old, 
don't lean them too far because they might just keep on falling. But you don't want to have to pick the poor little man or woman up and put them back in a chair and now you've got to x-ray a hip because you just dropped them. So be careful with that. So for the lateral, much like the forearm again, flex the arm 90 degrees. We don't have to turn the IR this time because we're not getting the whole forearm, we're just getting the elbow. Turn your hands. Now, what's wrong right there? Her body plane. Her body plane, she's not on the same horizontal plane. So what do we need to do? Scoot back or if she can lean forward, can you lean anymore? Or maybe lean back a little bit and there we go. Now we got that shoulder to press. Now we're as close to the same plane as we can. If you got somebody like Philip, somebody like me, it's gonna be a little harder. Um, it just depends on the patient. Again, if you have a table that raises, it makes your life so much easier because you just raise the table up and boom, you're done. So with this kind of equipment, you've got to think outside the box a little, which is good. It makes you think differently. We are centered right at the elbow joint. Quit flexing so much, geez, showing <laughs> off over here. Again, we want about two inches, two to three inches of the humerus and of the radius and ulna. We are centered right at the elbow joint, pretty much right on this uh, lateral epicondyle. Took me a minute, I was almost going to say medial. Y'all would have caught that right and been like, no, sir, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Patient holds still, and there's our last exposure. So those are the three three or four views of the elbow. Like I said, we have the coil, which is the trauma axial ladder, where we either, in that same ladder, we either aim towards the shoulder or away from the shoulder. I'll try to do a video on those just so, you know, y'all can look at them and know kind of what they look like at some point. Any questions? Alrighty, thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time.